good day to all of you and let me begin by thanking dr narayan rao for the invite dr dp singh and the science congress this is a very difficult topic you know i am basically a physicist i don't do research in education so i would first like to say what my credentials are in order to give this talk i have been with iit madras as assistant professor as professor for almost 30 years and iits by perception are known to provide good education they are not assessed they are not accredited my personal opinion is that iits should also be accredited i have gave lectures at several universities outside the country within the country and i was chair professor for 3 years at the central university tejpur what i find that there is a disconnect between lab and theory particularly at introductory physics level and research scholars do not have access to sophisticated instruments their samples are run by technicians they really do not know how the instrument functions that is the state of affairs as i see today in most of the universities universities are understaffed i know several state universities where number of faculty in the department of physics is only 6 anyway i made my talk very simple because uh, since i don't do research so i thought i would at least like to learn something so i'm just trying to define what is education or what is quality education and it did help me although being in iit we, as i said we always delivered quality education but i learned something while preparing this thing so these are the contents you know which will flow this definition of education is uh, from the educationist kelner and as you can see in its technical sense education is the process by which society through schools colleges universities and other institutions deliberately transmits its cultural heritage which is it is its accumulated knowledge values and skills from one generation to another generation there are some other definitions like we may a person which is fit for the society but quality is a very elusive concept it can have different meanings at different settings but quality is something which is very fundamental for education now what is science education and why we do it science education is the field concerned with sharing science content and processes with individuals not traditionally considered part of the scientific community so science education students learn to define refine and solve problems there are so many other things but what is most important science education is necessary for the world of work and economy everybody therefore goes through the science education now what are the requisites for quality science education i have put it under seven heads one of the most important is quality learner why the education in iit is good because there is a proper mix of quality students and quality faculty so one of the requirement 
very important requirement is that we should have quality learners, not simply attending classes, they should be engaged in learning. Then we have, should have quality learning environment, which means it should have physical facilities, classrooms, smart classrooms, laboratories, ICT infrastructure, library and so on. Then the quality contents, which is intended and taught curriculum. And the quality processes, which includes teacher, teaching learning processes, assessment and evaluation processes, use of technologies, there are some other things, you know, which really make uh, the education or the teachers function a little better. And what are the quality outcomes? That is achievement in literacy, achievement in numeracy, you know, solving problems, acquiring skills, acquiring interpersonal skills, being team members, and acquiring innovation and entrepreneurship skills. And the last is the governance. Governance should have been number one because none of these six points will function properly unless it is properly governed. Some of the central universities, they are functioning far better than many others. Is simply because of the governance and the governance structure placed in, put in place. And you know Taipur University stood five underneath ranking. It's a central university. And I was part of this one. I know how the governance is being done there. So the governance is very, very important. Now, I would define research, define scientific research, define the various types of research and how do we qualify or uh, uh, provide quality to research. Research is systematic investigation that is gathering and analysis of information designed to develop or contribute to general, generalizable knowledge that is research. It is applicable to science and non-science subjects as well. Scientific research is the one where we make use of scientific methods and try to uncover the truth, how the nature functions and so on. The research types you have, we have a pure and basic research, both experimental and theoretical with no long term benefits expected. We have a session just before this one on gravitational wave and that I can put under this kind of a research. A strategic basic research, again experimental and theoretical, acquiring knowledge, expectation of useful discoveries, applied research, original work undertaken to acquire knowledge with a special application in view, and then the developmental research where we carry out research, use existing knowledge, to produce new materials, devices, products and so on to make life. What are the measures of scientific research? Technical reports, publications, research monographs, patents filed, patents granted, technology developed, innovations, there could be some more which my, I might have missed. And quality in scientific research. There are several ways actually uh, to say whether a publication is of quality or not. One of them is peer review and standardized reporting, that is publication in high impact factor journals. Another one is bibliometric analysis, where H index or I10 index, like used in Google Scholar, can be taken as a basis. But most important I found the principles of scientific inquiry and consensus of the subject scholars. That is the most important where I feel there is a very little bias. Introduction of new technologies, introduction of disruptive technologies, innovation, 
and finally self assessment involving internal and external parties scientific and societal impact of research quality of teaching and supervision of phd scholars as so many ways one could really uh, ascribe quality to the scientific research then i actually looked at the number of publications which are brought out by number of countries you know this is uh, taken from a report which was commissioned by dst and as you can see us has a constant number around 140000 you please make a note 140000 which is steady almost from 2005 onwards china is going almost linearly and in india there have been an improvement and the publications of india around 2010 are about 40000 per year then i looked at another publication this gives a little more details it tells us the number of scientific researchers per 10000 labor force for some select countries and here if you notice us has been shown with the number of publications continuously increasing from 2001 to 2013 now i really do not know whether this slide is right or the one which i presented earlier but as far as number of publications by india is concerned that is right so since the in, uh, since india has only four researchers per 10000 labor force certainly we expect the number of publications to be less from india and therefore i thought i should recalculate some of these numbers based on the number of researchers per 10000 or finding the number of researchers calculate the publications per researcher calculate the publications per labor force and so on so i computed this table now if you look at column fifth us is number 1 china is number 2 UK is number three, India is number four, and so on. But the moment we convert this publication per researcher, US no longer remains number one. It goes to number five. Italy becomes number one. UK is number two. India is number three. but when we convert this number of publications per labor force then uk is number 1 us is number 2 and india is in fact last i am not sure which data should be used and when but in my opinion publications per researcher would be a better indicator than publications total publications by a country this gives the education structure in the country is a massive structure we have 753 universities 40760 colleges total enrollment is 26.58 million in engineering we have 4.3 million students science we have 4.68 million students the number of professors in the university is 33000 in affiliated colleges 82.82 uh, 
thousand. This gives some, but important thing is there are large number of private universities, 184, and most of these universities came into existence from year 2006 onward. We have 13 regulatory bodies which regulate different disciplines. I have been associated with University Grant Commission, All India Council of Technical Education and recently I have done some assessment for National Assessment and Accreditation Council 9. So I thought I should discuss a little bit about how the NAC does assessment and accreditation. NAC has got seven major criteria, curricular aspect, teaching, learning and evaluation, research consultancy and extension, infrastructure and learning resources, student support and progression, governance, leadership and management, innovation and best practice. And these seven have been further subdivided into 32 sub criteria. And if you go back where I have mentioned the requisites for quality education, you will find all of them are covered by NIC. So NIC has a system which covers, looks at all aspect of quality education. But I mentioned in the beginning IIT should go for accreditation, but we have a faulty accreditation system. Last year there was a ranking done, NIRF ranking. I took those universities and got the CGPA because they were assessed by NAIC also. I got their CGPA from uh, the EC meetings and tried to see if there is a correlation between the NAIC assessment or NIF ranking. And as you can see, I have fitted a best line. It does show some kind of trend that yes, the NIF ranking and NAC, they do correlate but very, very poorly. Correlation coefficient R square is 0 0.16. So, absolutely there is no correlation. I try to plot this one on a radar plot and you can see Although the university ranking goes from 1 to 100, the CGPA of NAC oscillates around 3. This indicates, you know, this some kind of fault in the system. I also wanted to look at some other way of looking at the quality of education. In 1964-66, Education Commission report, Kothari gave a formula for calculating the cost of education per student. Fortunately, NAIC asks this number and the profile of the institution. And I got some of these data, not from the NAIC, NAIC I collected later. And as you can see, salary, salary component for Triple IT Delhi is 1.31 and for a college in Hyderabad is 0.19x. This is a vast variation while for IITs it will be somewhere around 2 lakhs. So there is a large variation in the cost of education per student. Same thing is true for the total cost. There is a large variation. And I thought it should be related with the quality of education. Okay. So, I went again to the EC reports of NAC and collected all this data. And again you can see 
there is absolutely no correlation r square is 0 0.07 this is unit cost of education salary component versus now cgpa then this is this unit cost of education total against again there is no correlation so what is the problem conclusions of this study is that NIRF and max CGPA graph show the correct trend, but these are not strongly correlated. My suggestion is that we should carry out this exercise with the NIRF grading for 2017 which will come in the month of March or so and see whether this conclusion is supported. If it is supported, NAC or NIRF has to do some other exercise. Similarly, the unit, of, unit cost of education salary component versus net CGPA are not correlated, total cost is not correlated. What do we do? How to improve the correlation? That is the basic thing. NAC parameters cover the entire gamut of activities of an education institution. They cover every aspect for the quality education. So, what remains, one should examine the relative weightage of various components, whether they are right or they are should be reassigned the weightages. I also found that the data supplied by the institutions was very faulty in many cases. So, this data which we take from the SSR and so on should be verified. And similar exercise should be done for engineering colleges and art colleges. Somebody? Okay. Shortage of teachers, lack of infrastructure, research quality, lack of direction, examination, privatization of education, student participation disconnect between theory and laboratory, limited access to sophisticated instruments and so on. Okay, you can have this one. Recommendations, current best practices should be retained, disconnect between theory and lab to be removed, math education to be strengthened, individual brilliance should be sustained and those marginalized cases, they should be given due care. As I say lastly, any mind is a terrible thing to waste. And finally, this I have taken from Chinese. If you tell me, I will listen. If you show me, I will see. If you let me experience, I will learn. And we do not let our student experience. Acknowledgement. Finally, finally, thank, thank you, so, thank you much. so much.